Hey, good morning. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for coming to class today. And I do hope that you had a good, good midterm. I know that everything's going to check out just fine. I'll make sure to grade those and have those back to you for week six. And uh, by the way, um, I will have all of your work turned back to you. The things that you've turned into me, uh, the projects and things, those, those will all be turned back in as well um, for week six. There's, it's very possible they, they may um, get into you before then. I'll leave them with Miss Lisa if I do, so that you all can see how you're doing. I, I, I just want to assure you, everything's going great in the class. You have no reason to worry about your grades. I, I'm sure that if you're doing the work and you're putting the time into it, you'll be you'll be very happy with the uh, the outcome. So thanks so much for uh, for being in class today. Because you were here today, I'm going to waive your third quiz, uh, which would be taken next week for week six. Um, so everybody gets 100 for being in class today. You'll get 100 on your on your next quiz. Um, I will post a quiz for uh, for this week, um, but you won't have to take the quiz. All right, um, we'll we'll go over it together. Um, but that's that's important for your final exam. Um, so uh, just to catch us up, um, you will have turned in now uh, two two projects. Uh, you'll have turned in your project number one. That's going to be graded. Same thing with uh, your project number two. So what we're looking at for week seven, when you come back, project number three is due. And so make sure that you're working on project three. It should already be posted on the student portal, so you should have no problem um, getting that, filling it out. Uh, but I look forward to being with you next week, week seven, as we continue on in our study. So right now we're about a week behind, and we're going to stay a week behind until next week. I'm going to try our best to um, to get us uh, back up to speed week seven before we take our evaluation break. All right, I know everybody's looking forward to that too. But today I want to talk to you about evangelism. So remember, um, uh, this is a foundational class for youth ministry. We we talked about having purpose. Um, we talked together about uh, we talked together about the, the six foundational elements or five foundational elements for, for youth ministry, and and uh, we we we've, we've discovered that we're going to be reaching different groups of students um, through the purpose of our ministry, and and those groups are crowd students, church students, uh, craver students, um, uh, committed students, and and then those that are commissioned. Um, those that are going to follow Jesus the rest of their life. And so every single one of those groups of students, we're going to want to reach through different measures, through different means. And the first, the first group of students that we want to reach is are the crowd students. And the crowd students are, are, are going to be reached evangelistically. So that's one of the foundational focuses of our youth ministry. We, we've taken a lesson or two to talk about the students that we'll reach um, and now we're going to talk about actually reaching them. So, so we're going to we're going to be discussing uh, crowd student evangelism um, today for class. Uh, I'm glad that you're that you're here for this. Um, this is a a wonderful lesson, um, and it's geared for to help you and encourage you to make evangelism a practice in your life, a discipline in your life, and, and understanding that we want to reach students with the gospel, but we want other students to reach other students with the gospel. I, I have a few things I want to share with you, some statistics, uh, just just to give you an idea of, of what's going on um, in the life of a student. And this is an article um, that was put out by uh, the WMU, actually, or on Mission Magazine. And I believe it was put out last year. Uh, uh, but this was, um, this was an article about the, the pulse on uh, evangelism, reaching our students evangelistically. Here, here's, what you, here's what you need to understand. Younger millennials. Now, millennials are those who were born um, between 1990 and 1996. 36% of millennials, those born from 90 to 96, millennials, 30, 36%, consider themselves religiously uh, unaffiliated. Over a third consider themselves religiously unaffiliated. Now, there are those that, that do have about 19% or 20% of them consider themselves to be evangelical Protestants, and then 3% say they're other Christian groups, and then there's mainline Protestants. And so what we're looking at is 36% of our younger millennials aren't religiously affi uh, affiliated, and then about the same, about the same consider themselves to be uh, evangel evangel evangelical Protestants or mainline Protestants. 
um, which means there's much there's much work to do. Okay, I, I want your hearts to, to be open, um, but also to be broken at, at the realization that there are many, many lost students um, among us. Many don't know Christ. Many aren't following Christ. And, and, and we have the calling on our lives, the commission on our lives um, to, to share the gospel with them with hopes that they will be saved. And, and so uh, I want to I wanna share with you a few things um, just to keep in mind. Uh, Evangelism Explosion, that's uh, one of my favorite ministries. Um, uh, I, I love evangelism. I love teaching people how to evangelize. And I love, I love taking groups out to share the gospel with our community. And Evangelism Explosion, they, they share that 8 out of 10 people that you'll come in contact with, 8 out of 10 people are willing to hear what you have to share. They are willing to listen to it. Um, we're talking about the gospel. 8 out of 10 people are willing to hear the gospel. But here's the problem. 9 out of 10 Christians aren't willing to share the gospel. They, they have excuses. They're either too afraid. Uh, they just won't do it. And so if 8 out of 10 are willing to hear, that's 80%, and 9 out of 10 aren't willing to share, there's a good chance they're not being shared with. And, and, and I think I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people are afraid. Um, uh, they're nervous, or maybe they're just not, they're not strong enough in their, in their walk with Christ to know what to say. And, and you know what? That can be changed. Um, we, we, can, we can do something with that. You know, we can, we can train our students how to share the gospel. We can, we can evangelize to, to our students that come, and, and we can give them an invitation to respond um, to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can do something about that. So I want you to remember this. Um, every week, there's 936 weeks from the, per, the point that a, that a child is born to when they turn 18 years old. 936 weeks. Now, you're going to get students uh, a little over halfway um, in their in their time from you know ages uh, 12 to, to 18 or 19 um, and so you're about halfway you, you only have so many weeks to share with these students uh, before before they go to college before they get married before they decide what they're going to do with the rest of their lives we have this small window this small window maybe a few hundred weeks to share Christ with them and, and, and I want to challenge you and encourage you to make evangelism your heartbeat. Um, make sharing Jesus Christ with your students uh, one of the sole reasons that you exist. And make evangelism a foundation for your class. So the, uh, the scripture that I want you to hear today comes from Matthew chapter 9, um, verses 35 through 36. And uh, that scripture... Um, uh, really uh, burdens my heart because it gives us the the it gives us the heart of Christ, opens our hearts up to, to what Jesus sees when he sees masses of people, crowds of people. Um, and, and so remember uh, Matthew 9, 35 through 36. It says that Jesus went about all the cities and the villages. Jesus was an evangelist, okay? Jesus went from city to city, town to town, village to village, synagogue to synagogue. And, and preaching, look at this, Matthew, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What's gospel? Gospel is good news, okay? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But look at this. When he saw the multitudes, saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them. Why was he moved with compassion for them? There's, verse 36 tells us, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And, and when I think about our class that meets on Tuesday mornings, 11 a.m., Youth Ministry 301, I see the potential for a mighty move of God. I see the potential for a harvest of souls um, to be reaped from from your from your ministry, from your fruit, from from your love for the gospel, your love for the kingdom of God, and, and so and so, I know I know that we see the Savior's heart for compassion, but I want you to ask yourself: Do I have a heart, a compassion to see lost students come to faith in Jesus Christ? And, and, and so we have to adapt um, to to this mindset that 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 evangelism evangelism must be our focus. 
okay, must be one of the foundational things that we build our student ministries upon. We, we need that mindset, okay? Um, so I'm going to share with you today um, some commitments that you need to make, all right? So you've got a worksheet to work through. I want to talk to you about some commitments today that I hope will increase the, the desire um, to, to reach students with the, with the gospel. One is this. Um, we need to understand that evangelism is a process. So an evangelistic youth ministry will understand the process behind sharing the gospel. And, and so it, it's a process in the sense that we must wait. It's a process in the sense that we must be sensitive to the needs of the students. It's a process that says that it may take more than one time sharing the gospel with this child to see them come to faith in Christ. Bill Fay uh, is the author and you know the founder of Share Jesus Without Fear, which is one of the more well-known evangelistic tools that churches use to share the gospel. Bill Fay shares that it sometimes it takes as many as seven conversations with someone before you ever get permission to share the Lord Jesus Christ with them. Now, you may be like, I don't need permission. I, I'm just going to be bold and I'm just going to go share. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. You should share the gospel courageously and boldly and should not be ashamed of the gospel. However, however, I believe relationships need to be made. And, and if we're going to be working with students and sharing the gospel with students, then that's even more true. We, we have to have a heart, a heart for students, and we must understand evangelism is a process. It's a process. I'll give you a scenario. Um, so there's this one young man that our youth minister and myself are discipling right now, and his name is Chris. And uh, Chris has been a part of our church um, for, for almost two years now. Chris has been coming to Bible studies, and he's been coming to youth outings. He's been coming, he, he's been getting involved with some of the service projects and things like that. Um, but, but Chris didn't know Christ. And it's very, very evident based on based on some of the decisions that he was making at home and um, some of his some of his mindsets and worldviews and, and his own beliefs were keeping him from following Jesus. Well, Sean and I got to share the gospel with him not not long ago, just a few weeks back, and Chris gave his heart to Christ. And and, and I look at the process. The process was it took years. Two years, and Chris has been to every Bible study. Chris has been to all the worship services. Chris has heard the gospel because here at Midway, we preach the gospel. We, we love the gospel. We want people to respond to the gospel. However, Chris hasn't hasn't ever stepped forward to say, I want to follow Jesus. So years of process. I, I think about young Casey. Years ago, um, we were doing uh, uh, VBS, and um, Casey uh, had this Thomas belief, this doubt um, where if I don't see Christ, if I don't, if I can't touch Him, if I can't see Him, I'm not going to believe in Him. And I remember us being just in tears uh, with Casey, um, just pleading with her to come to faith in Christ, to put her heart, uh, 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 give her heart to Jesus, and, and Casey just wouldn't do it. And we finally just had to, to, to let it rest, and we said, you know what, you, you've heard about Christ, we've shared Christ, you know what we believe, we want you to believe on Christ on your own, we, we, we can't make you, we can't push you. And I remember Casey going home with that. It was another year before Casey came to faith in Jesus, but she finally did. Understanding that time is not on our side, understanding that eternity is, is forever, um, we, we realize that we must be very, uh, very intentional and, and we, all, we need to be very zealous with sharing. But, but understanding that, that, that the gospel has to flourish in someone's heart and Christ has to draw them to himself. The Holy Spirit has to be at work. And, and so an evangelistic youth ministry needs to understand that evangelism is a process. So there's a lot of waiting. There's a lot of praying. There's a lot of intention, intentionality. There's a lot of sharing. There's a lot of inviting. However, we can encourage them to come to faith, but we can't make them come to faith. And that's the work of God. Paul talks about how different ones watered and uh, different ones, you know, to, uh, you know, work the soil, but Christ brings the increase. And that's the, that's the same, same thing. It's a process, okay? So commit to the process. Be patient. Understand that a child may not come to faith in Jesus the very first time they hear at your church. They may, uh, they may at the next youth event. They may, at, they may on this Wednesday night. They may give their hearts to Christ, but it's a process. It is a process, and it begins with with you pouring into them and loving them, sharing with them, being intentional and incarnational before them. How about this next one? Uh, an evangelistic youth ministry has an evangelistic attitude. 
you have to teach students um, the importance of reaching the next student. So one thing that our Sunday school class does, um, I teach a young adults, young married Sunday school class with my wife, and one thing that we've learned to do is we always leave two two open chairs, always. Um, so if the room is full, we always leave two more chairs. And there's a reason for that. We have an evangelistic attitude, a mindset that says, I want to reach more people with the gospel. Can you do that with your students? Teach them that we exist for the newcomer. We exist for the open chair. We want to see one more student come to faith in Jesus. And so let's please make room. You have to teach your students to have a, a heart that says, I'm open for more students to come to faith in Christ. I'm not content with just the group that we have right now. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for what God is doing. I'm thankful for the students that are coming to youth group. I, I'm thankful, but I, I still want to see God save more. And so teaching our students to have a mindset that says more are welcome here. We want to see more come to Christ. We, we, want, to be, we want them to be excited uh, about Jesus and following Jesus. It just says, I want one more to come, one more to come, one more to come. Evangelism is a, you have to have an attitude for evangelism. What did Jesus say? Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 through 13. Jesus uh, said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I came to call the, I came to not call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Understanding that, that our students are surrounded by lost people wherever they go, on the teams that they play, on the classes that they're in, at the lunch table. There are lost people everywhere. An evangelistic attitude says, I want to reach more students. I want to reach my peers with the gospel. How about this next one? Youth workers must love students. Okay? If you are a youth pastor, you must love students. You must be passionate about reaching students. If you are a lead youth worker, you must be passionate about students. If you are a youth volunteer and you are serving every week or an intern and you're serving every week alongside of a youth ministry team, you also must love students. I've never understood why anyone would volunteer to be in a Sunday school class or uh, go on a trip or a camp or retreat or be there on a Wednesday night and not like students and not want to reach students. You, you have to love them. Love students. And that means that you, you have to be willing to risk some craziness every now and then. You, you, have to, you have to have fun with them and you have to love them and care for them and reach out to them. So youth workers must love students. We live in a generation where we have more opportunities than ever to share the gospel. More opportunities than ever. And so I want you to think about these things, okay? Um, teens uh, can be reached, but you've got to have a heart to connect um, with students. And so this goes with the next point, too. Youth workers must model evangelism. So youth workers must love students. Youth workers must model evangelism. There's lots of ways to reach students. Um, we can reach students through through text messaging. We can reach students through social media. We can reach students uh, with a phone call or an email um, uh, those are those are all great ways to share. But here's one that I that I want to encourage you: face to face contact, encouragement, sharing. You, you got to model evangelism before students face to face. Um, uh, students uh, communicate with their ministers great with the greatest through through face to face interaction. And, and so, I encourage you to take time to love on your students and, and model evangelism before them. Now, here's the thing about it. If you want your students to be evangelistically minded, then you have to model evangelism before them. It, it, it's so hypocritical for a youth minister to say, all right, I need you to reach your friends for the gospel's sake. I want you to share Christ with them. I want you to go and go on a mission trip on Monday and go to class and share Jesus with your friends. However, you're not willing to do that yourself. You have to be willing to model evangelism before your students. And, and, and so if you're asking them to go and share the gospel, you've got to be willing to go and share the gospel as well. And, and you must be willing to take them. I was in New York City uh, last, um, last April. I was in New York City for uh, an evangelism explosion expo that we were doing with the church there in the Bronx. And, and we, trained, uh, we trained some 75, 80 people um, one Saturday to share the gospel and we took them out for OJT. OJT is on the job training. So that's one of the greatest things about evangelism explosion. But hang on a second. I have a phone call. I need to make sure that I, that I get that.
All right, that was slightly embarrassing. Well, yeah, I had a phone call here at, at the church, and um, so I'll, I'll get back to them. But I was in I was in New York City, and uh, and we had uh, an evangelism uh, expo going on. So we trained people how to share the gospel, and then uh, and then I I took a group of students. I, I had high school students. There were six of us. Um, we went out into uh, time, not Times Square. We went out to the Bronx. It would have been Central Park. We were in Central Park, just the outskirts of uh, Central Park. And we, um, we shared the gospel with six different groups of people in an hour and a half. Shared the, the whole gospel from start to finish, talking about, um, we, we shared that heaven's free gift, man is a sinner, God is loving and just, Christ came and died on the cross for our sins and was raised to life and purchased us a place in heaven, and then you can put your faith in Jesus. Each presentation took roughly 10 to 15 minutes. We did a survey, you know, to, to help connect uh, connect with, with lost people. And we shared the gospel with six different groups of people. I think it ended up being, um, I think it ended up being 14 people in that, uh, in that 90 minute time span. And, and you know what? The students were getting somewhat discouraged because uh, at first people weren't wanting to talk to them. And I remember this lesson, uh, this lesson in youth ministry class. If I want them to know how to share the gospel, I must model it for them. So I took I took the group by by the reins and I said, okay, we're gonna go and we're gonna share with these people and we're gonna we're gonna find some lost people. They're they are there. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in Central Park just in the section that we were in. It was just rewarding because I was I was trying to live this out, you know, among my students. If if you want them to share Christ, you must be willing to share Christ. I was in Baltimore, Maryland over the summer on a mission trip. Same thing, same thing. Uh, we've been encouraging our kids to talk to other people about Jesus, to share the gospel with other people while we were there. We're, we're spending some time in the Inner Harbor. We went to dinner one night after uh, our, our day of serving, and um, uh, there was a there was a homeless guy that, that was just begging for food, and we were able to provide some food for him, love for him, share the gospel with him. But then there was another there was another young man um, that was uh, that was on a park bench, and uh, his name was Arthur. And, and Arthur, um, Arthur was lost as lost can be, and and didn't know Christ. And and we we were able to talk to Arthur. He was just he was just sitting there. He's really down on a on, really down on himself and discouraged. And Courtney, uh, one of our team leaders, and myself, we sat down with Arthur and we we shared Christ with him. And Arthur gave his heart to Jesus. And, and you know what? I, I was glad to do that because uh, I was able to share in front of a group of students how to share the gospel. And, and, and I showed them that you can do it. You can. You just got to be willing. Um, and that's what I'm saying here. Youth workers must model evangelism. You, you, I, I want to ask the class, you know, this is something that we're going to talk about when I get back week, week seven. But when was the last time you shared the gospel with someone intentionally? And, and I want to I say this. It needs to be outside of your context. It can't, it can't be inside your church, Okay. When was the last time you shared the gospel with somebody outside of youth group or outside of a sanctuary or, or outside of for being behind a pulpit? When was the last time you shared Jesus? And, and so I can I can tell you, um, my last time sharing the gospel uh, came came as soon as Thursday night. Um, we were doing an evangelism explosion uh, event, and we were with Donald, and we shared the gospel with Donald in his home. And uh, Donald was a believer in Christ. We didn't know it until after we asked him, but Donald was a believer in Christ. We were able to pray for him, encourage him. Donald, uh, Donald's a brother to a young man named Michael who comes to our church, and we share Christ with him. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I can give testimony of the last time I shared with someone, uh, w you know, w uh, shared someone outside of the church. That was just a couple of days ago. When was the last time you shared the gospel with someone? The story continues, okay? Um, how about this one? Evangelistic youth ministries challenge students with strong evangelistic themes. What do I mean by that? I mean that so you want to see you want to see students come to Christ. You want to share the gospel with other students. Um, we have to we have to take up the responsibility um, to to creating events, out outreaches, um, ministry nights where we challenge students to share Jesus with their peers. So that can come in a lot of different ways. That can come with a big crowd event. Um, that you know, where you like Christmas is coming up, so that would be a great opportunity. 
to share the gospel. Do a do a Christmas do a Christmas themed event and encourage a party and invite invite friends to come and you share the gospel in that light. Um, I, I'm thinking about. Uh, maybe maybe you are going to take some students out door to door to evangelize. Uh, maybe there's a festival coming up where you want to reach cross football season um, is still in swing, and maybe your team's fortunate enough to go to the playoffs, and so you want to do a tailgating uh, event where you invite the you invite the young men, cheerleaders, and band to come over, and you feed them and you share the gospel with them. You have to provide students opportunities to share. Okay, present to them strong evangelistic themes, and do so in your teaching too. Do so in your teaching. Uh, if you want them to be charged and ready to share Christ, challenge them with the Word of God on a weekly basis. Disciple them in a way um, that, that points them to evangelism and evangelizing their friends. I want to talk to you about um, some concentrations that will increase the uh, the pool. Okay, We're, we're, we're working towards um, making evangelistic events to share with crowd students. And so I want you to remember a few things to concentrate on when you have your event. So let's say that you, you plan the event. There's, you know, hundreds of students there or tens of students there. And um, you, you've invited a big group of students, maybe maybe 50 students have showed up for your event. And, and, and you want to have an environment um, that says, I'm thinking about sharing the gospel with them. Well, well let's talk about, um, let's talk about some concentrations. One is this. Crowd students need to feel accepted. They need to feel, they need to feel accepted. Now, I want you to understand something. Uh, acceptance and compromise, uh, they're not, that, that's not what I want you to do. I'm not asking you to compromise, okay? I, I'm asking you to accept them. Crowd students, understand that lost people are going to be coming to your event or coming to your youth room or coming to, uh, you know, whatever you put together. Crowd students are going to show up. And there's a good chance that the crowd students don't act like saved people because they're lost. All right, uh, you can't expect lost people to act saved, and, and so and so I've, I've I've struggled through that over the years, you know, stressing that to people that, you know, I uh, I don't expect a student to understand how to you know act in church or be in church if they've never been in church. Okay, so a crowd student, we want them to feel accepted in the sense that you're welcome here. Um, we're glad that you're here. Make yourself at home. Um, and honestly, we're not asking them to change anything. We want to present to them the life-changing message of the gospel, um, but we want their hearts to be changed. And that and that in itself will take some time, and Christ will have to do the work and, and the Spirit of God once they've been saved. Then you can expect some changes, but but don't don't go in there expecting you know the students to act perfect or 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 to be like your saved students or Christian students are. So so understand that crowd students need to feel accepted. Another concentration. Crowd students need to be challenged. And when I say crowd students need to be challenged, challenge them with the gospel. Challenge them with the reality that, you know, life is short and eternity is forever and that heaven is a real place and that that Christ Christ came and died for them so that they could be uh could have the opportunity to be saved and go to heaven. Um but all even more so, challenge them in the sense that, you know, you, we're sinful, we're sin, sinful people. And, and, and understand that, that students that are coming there, if they don't have Christ, they're sinners in need of a Savior. And so challenge them with that aspect of the gospel. Challenge them. If they've never followed Jesus, now is the time to follow Jesus. Uh, you, you're earnestly in, in presenting this urgent message of the gospel to these students. So crowd students need to be challenged. And, and you know what? There may be crowd students there that are saved. There may be crowd students that have never gotten serious about their relationship with Christ if they're following Jesus. And so crowd students need to be challenged in the sense that if you're not involved with a youth group, if you're not, if you're not a part of a local church, if you're not, if you're saved and you're not following Jesus closely and you're not sharing Christ with others and you're not in the Word of God, if these things aren't going on in your life, then you need to wake up to the reality that that you don't have much time either. And, and, and Christ is, is pleading with you to please come and follow him. So crowd students need to be challenged. Uh, another concentration is crowd students need to be loved unconditionally. All right? Remember, you're, you're reaching hurting students, broken students, and, and, and we, want, we want their hearts to be open to the gospel. And so please, please understand that, uh, that we want to love them unconditionally. Maybe a student's coming and, and they're coming from the worst week of their life. You know, maybe their parents have split up or maybe maybe they have been experimenting with some harmful things. Maybe they've been told some really rough news or bad news. Maybe someone close to them uh, in their family um, have, have, has received rough news. I don't know. 
make sure that, that our arms are open, that we're ready to receive them and say we love them. Crown students need to love unconditionally. Now, um, uh, to close out this lesson, uh, I, I, if we were in class today, you know, together, I would want to talk to you about um, relational evangelism. Um, this is where the intentional part comes for you. Being intentional means that I'm trying to build relationships with students. And so relationship evangelism is simply building a rapport, building a relationship with the child um, and sharing Christ with them. A lot of you are already doing that. You know, I read, I've read some of your, uh, some of your projects and your reports and things, and I'm seeing that. I'm seeing uh, some relationships being built with the hopes that you would share the gospel um, with those students. So I just give you some, you know, some ideas to 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 share Jesus with them, and and you know, talked about a, a relational evangelism, and then this last section here are um, uh, segments. You know, these are some things that you might want to put into your crowd program. So I talked about audience activators. Audience activators, you know, when you've got a crowd of students together, you're gonna have to call them all to order and call them all to meeting, and you're gonna want to uh, you're gonna want to make sure that they know that they're welcome. You might play a game. You might do a breakout something to get them moving and involved. But you're going to want to build a bridge between that activity or that, you know, that breakout, that game, build a bridge into why you're there. Okay, so so um, you're going to want to say, you know, we played this game, but we want you to think about this as we head into worship tonight. This is the reason that we're together this evening. Creative communication, of course, is the gospel message, sharing the gospel itself. Um, you may do it through object lesson. You may do it through a sermon. You may do it through a creative, just some type of creative way to share Jesus. You might use other students. You might use testimonies. You might use video. Whatever you know, whatever you use, uh, make sure that it's creative in the sense that you put some time and effort into it, and you want them to hear the gospel clearly. And then, of course, that last section is very important. You have to draw them to a decision. You know, you share the gospel. Well, here's your opportunity to respond to the gospel, and and that that gives you a chance to decide. Am I going to follow Jesus? And I've made that invitation to them public, and I want them to have that chance to, to respond to Christ. And then, of course, you dismiss. So that's the lesson this week. Um, we're talking about reaching crowd students with the gospel, being evangelistic in mind. I pray and I hope that you're doing that. I hope that you will love students to that point, that you'll do everything that, that you can to share Jesus Christ with them so that they will be saved and they will follow Jesus. All right. I hope everybody has a great rest of the afternoon. Um, I, I hope that you're finishing class early so that, you know, you have a little extra time today. But I look forward to seeing you all um, as we get back uh, week seven um, for class. God bless you all. Take care.